Hey guys, today we're going to learn about how to make shockwave diagrams. Last time we talked about shockwaves and wakes, and I told you that this time we'd, we'd learn how to do this. So it turns out that you can look at a picture of a shockwave and figure out how fast the object is moving. And today we'll be thinking about uh, uh, aircraft and rockets going through air. Um, so as we said last time, the, um, uh, the angle here of the wake that an object makes when it's going faster than the waves it makes, the angle of that wake gets sharper, uh, sharper, the faster the thing is going. Um, and today we're going to learn about Mach number and uh, how that corresponds to uh, to these to these images of, of shock waves. Okay, so um, first we probably need to talk about what a Mach number is, since that's uh, uh, what we're going to be working with here. Okay, a Mach number uh, is named after a guy named Ernst Mach, who was a, a German physicist who figured a lot of this stuff out. And it is simply a ratio. Mach number is the ratio of the speed of the aircraft compared to the speed of sound. So if the plane, if the aircraft is moving faster than sound, then it's going to make a wedge-shaped or a conical shock wave like this. Uh, and the faster it's going, the sharper that, that shock wave is, is. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare the speed of the plane in a situation to how fast the sound is going. Okay, so we're going to use this one. Uh, and remember now, the uh, airplane makes sound when it's in any place. So right at this moment here, it's making sound, and we're for convenience for using the tip of the nose. Um, and it's making sound, but since no time has passed, the sound hasn't gone anywhere. And the farther back behind the plane is, the farther the sound has been able to spread out in all directions. So we're choosing, just for convenience, this spot right here. And we're looking at the red dot, uh, and we're saying, okay, when the airplane was at that position, so when we back up the plane and we put the plane in that position, the plane made sound. And that sound has been expanding outward in a circle ever since. Really a sphere, but on our diagram, it's going to be a circle. Okay? So it's expanding and expanding and expanding, as we saw in that moving uh, um, uh, animation last time with the plane that was flying subsonic and just at the speed of sound and then supersonic. Uh, these circles expand as the plane moves forward. Anyway, this this circle has expanded so it is this big at this moment in time when the plane has reached this position here. So if we uh, measure that, we can see that the sound has gone one unit of distance. Maybe it's a mile, maybe it's a one foot, whatever it is, but it's gone one unit of distance. And in that same amount of time, the airplane has gone three units of distance. It's gone to here and this far and this far again. So the airplane has gone three units of distance, while the sound has gone one unit of distance. And Mach number is the ratio of the speed of the plane to the speed of sound. So this plane is going Mach 3. Okay? And this cone here is a cone, uh, this wedge, this angle, is the angle that you get for anything that is going Mach 3. Now, your homework, I'm going to show you how to make these. I'm going to go step by step how to go through these. But your homework for today is going to be to create shockwave diagrams for an aircraft that is going Mach 5, another one for Mach 4, one for Mach 3, Mach 2, and finally for Mach 1. Okay, that's your homework for today. And I'll show that to you again in a second. But uh, yeah, that's your homework. Make shockwave diagrams for Mach 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. You need to be able to create the diagrams. So if I say create a Mach 3 diagram, you have to be able to come up with something that looks like this. And you have to be able to look at a diagram and, and be able to figure out what the Mach number is. It's actually pretty easy. Um, and uh, so I'm going to show that to you right now. Okay, so our principle here again um, is that as the airplane flies along, this time obviously it's flying to our left, it is continually making sound. And if we look at the uh, the rings of sound that it makes, because the sound goes out in all directions at the same speed, um, it creates this wedge shape, which actually forms the shock wave here. There's actually an infinite number of these circles, but the edge of all of the circles ends right on this, uh, on this, on this wedge. So that's why you get the shock wave there. Okay, so again, this is kind of to explain uh, what the deal is. 
uh, why this works. So if the airplane or when the airplane was at the two centimeter mark here on this ruler, it was making the sound which is centered on the two centimeter mark. So it's this circle here. All right. Now, since that moment when the plane made that sound, the sound has gone one unit and the plane has gone two units. Right. That's kind of up here in the table. So uh, one second ago, the plane was at the two centimeter mark. And the sound since then has traveled one one uh, uh, one centimeter, and we can choose any of these uh, circles that we want. If we look at this one here, this third one that is centered on the six centimeter spot. Since that moment, the sound has traveled one, two, three centimeters, while the plane has traveled six. So the ratio this time is six to three, or in this one it was two to one. Uh, if we go back here to the one with, that's centered on the eight centimeter line, that's this circle here, we can see that the sound has traveled four centimeters while the plane has traveled eight. So it's a ratio of eight to four. All those come out to two to one. So this is Mach two. This is a Mach two uh, cone. All right. Again, that's kind of explaining Mach number one more time. All right. Now, how do we make these things? Uh, we are. All, you know what? I'm just going to go to the uh, to the document camera. Okay, so for this you need a penny and you need a ruler with centimeters on it, okay? If you don't have a penny or a um, ruler with centimeters on it, you can use any circular object like a ketchup off a, a, the top off a ketchup bottle or a quarter or some washer or something like that. And then we can create a ruler and I will show you that at the end of this. But first I'm going to show you how to do this for a, uh, for a penny. A centimeter ruler. Now, why do we use a penny? Because it turns out that if you draw a circle around a penny, pretty close, that circle will be almost exactly two centimeters in diameter. See that? So if we put a dot on here, that means that the radius of the circle that's drawn around a penny is one centimeter. And that's very convenient for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line through the center of that, of that circle that we made. There we go. We're going to be as precise with it as we can. Okay. So this circle represents the sound that the aircraft made when it was at that point. Uh, and since the, the plane was there, the sound has been expanding in all directions at the speed of sound. But meanwhile, the plane is going faster than sound. So if we want to do, say, Mach 3, that means that the, you know what, I'm going to do it this way so that we can, uh, so that we're counting up and not down. It's fine. Okay. So when the plane was here, it made sound. And uh in the one second since then, the sound has traveled this far. It's gone a radius of one. But in that same amount of time, the airplane has gone three because we're choosing Mach 3. Okay, this is for Mach 3. All right, so we're going to put a dot up here at uh, three centimeters from the center of that circle. So the sound has traveled one centimeter and the plane has traveled three centimeters. And as you know, these shockwave diagrams come out to be straight line from the nose of the plane to just touching that circle. So we'll do that, draw lines that are just touching the circle. There it is. That is a shockwave diagram for Mach 3. Now we can do this backwards as well. If I give you this diagram and ask you, hey, what's the Mach number of this, uh, of this plane? What you do is... Um, and I often will not give you the circle, okay? I'll just give you this, this cone. Um, well, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I would give you something like this. I'm going to make it so it is. I want to make this symmetrical so that it uh, isn't all lopsided on us. There we go. So I might give you something like this. Now, the one I give you will generally be round numbers. This particular example, as you see, I'm just sketching it on here, so it may not be a round number. But I may give you this and say, what's the Mach number? Mach equals, and you need to find it. Okay, so here's what you do. You put your penny within the wedge, and you place it 
so that when you draw a circle around that penny, it will just touch the wedge. See that? That's what you do. Now you have a circular pattern just like this. You find the center of the, uh, the penny, it's right about there, and now you measure. Now you know that the radius of the penny is one centimeter, so that makes it easy. And this one comes out to be about 3.25, okay? About 3.25. So this would be Mach 3.25, because this distance was 3.25 centimeters. And this distance was one centimeter. So the ratio of how far the sound went compared to how far the plane went, or the plane to the sound, is 3.25 to 1. Now, the ones that I give you will generally be nice round numbers. This one came out, came out a little bit odd, but the principle is the same. Okay, so to summarize, you draw a line. You write, draw a circle around your penny so that the, the, it is centered on the line. You mark the center and then you say, well, what Mach number do they want us to give you? What do we uh, want you to give us? And I'm gonna say Mach two on this one, Mach two. So I'm gonna measure two centimeters, two centimeters from the center of the circle because the plane went two centimeters when the sound went only one. So that's where the nose of the plane is. And then we will draw our circles, draw our lines to the edge of the circle. Fairly close. And that's it. That's a Mach 2 diagram. That's all there is to it. Okay, what if you don't have a, uh, a penny or you don't have a, um, a centimeter ruler? Um, well, you have to use something else, right? Um, how about a nickel or a quarter? or a washer, something like that. So here's what you do. You draw a circle all the way around it, whatever object you have, okay? Then you take a piece of blank paper. You're basically gonna make your own ruler out of this. Fold it in half, and then and in quarters again, and then you're going to make marks on this to mark the diameter. Now it's also useful to draw a line through the center of this so that you're consistent. So you have something to measure along, okay? Uh, and uh, so now, now you have two marks that are the diameter of the thing. Then you put a one of those marks on the center of the circle and draw two more. Now you have a ruler that has the radius of the, of your circle and you can make it as many marks as you want with that, okay? And now you have a ruler which is custom made for whatever circular object you have. And now you do the same thing. If you want to do a Mach 3, one, two, three, there's the, um, the plane was here at the center of the circle. It's moved three units, one, two, three, and draw a long tangent to the edge of the circle. And there's your Mach 3 diagram. If we give you this, give you the wedge, you take whatever circle you have, you lay it into in the, uh, so it's just touching, draw the circle all around it, use your same ruler and measure and say, okay, the sound went one unit, and the plane went three units, so this is Mach 3. That's it. All right. Uh, so we learned what Mach number is. We learned how to make shockwave diagrams. We learned how to interpret shockwave diagrams. And that's enough for one day. So once again, your homework is to create shockwave diagrams for Mach, Mach 5, Mach 4, Mach 3, Mach 2, and Mach 1. The Mach 1 one is a little bit tricky. Um, but remember, all these shockwave diagrams that you make, you have a line which is touching the nose of the plane and is tangent to the circle on each side. And the slower it goes, the more vertical it gets. Okay? All right, have a great day. We'll see you next time.